Good morning and happy Resurrection Sunday. Let us pray. Dear God, we acknowledge you as our Father. We only bow our heads in great adoration to you. Thank you for all your blessings, even though we know we do not deserve them. We pray for our nation, our leaders, as well as our bereaved families, and especially those who has an urgent need in this season. Be with us, direct us, and guide us in the way in which we should go. Today, we collectively pray for the unchurched and those who do not know you as Lord of everything. These and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I am going to start our church school lesson with our church school creed. I believe my AME church school must grow and grow and that I must make it a top priority to make it so. Every member a Christian, every Christian a worker, every worker trained to the worker need not to be ashamed. This I ask in Jesus' name, amen. And welcome to church school. This is actually the last Sunday in the month of June, June 26. And this will be my last Sunday teaching for this quarter. Again, again our theme for this quarter is partners in a new creation. And we are in the book of Isaiah. The title of today's lesson is God Offers Deliverance. Our printed text comes from Isaiah 51, verses 1 through 8. Uh, before I read my printed text, I just need to remind us as we go through this, we need to be encouraged by the fact that God has promised deliverance from devastation. He wants to turn deserts into gardens. And that is really good news for when it seems that everything and everywhere we look, there are wars that are turning good places into deserts. There are sinful men who continue to ravish nations that have not caused them any harm. As in the case of Russia and Ukraine. So when we go through today's lesson, we will see that God has promised to end an end to all of this. And he would make the wilderness like Israel, like Eden. God's place. Our printed text, starting with verse one. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from whence you are hewn, and to the quarry, quarry from which you were dig. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, your, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made many, made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the people. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out. My arms will rule the peoples. The coastland wait for me. 
and for my arm, they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look to the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke and the earth will swear out like a garment and those who live on it will die like gnats. But the salvation will be forever and my deliverance will never be ended. Listen to me, you who know righteousness, you people who have my teachings in your heart and do not fear the reproach of others and do not be dismayed when they revile you. For the malt will eat them up like a garment and the worm will eat them like wool. But my deliverance will be forever and my salvation to all generations. Amen. Our introduction, God offers deliverance. A key to correctly interpreting prophecy is identifying the people to whom the prophecy is addressed. Once you know the audience for the prophetic declaration, you can put the review of events in a suitable time frame and thereby access the legitimacy of the foretelling. The passage is directed to the nation of Israel suffering in Babylonian captivity. This message is an assurance of hope to lift the nation above its despair. In this lesson, in this study, put yourself in the scene in which and watch the word pictures created in the prophecy. It is natural for people to experience fear and self-doubt self and situations of adversity. How might you feel if you were living in a country under the domination of a cruel and ungodly power? In that situation, what would a message of hope from a reliable, proven source do for you? Would that message give you something to hold on to? Something to work toward? That is the view to take when working through this lesson. Telling the Bible story, God offers deliverance. The text opens by addressing those persons who were seeking the Lord. At time we hear an opinion that righteous persons do not show fear. We expect believers to remain firm in the Lord in the face of advers adversity. This was not the situation here. The people of Israel feared God, but were short, short on hope. Discouragement had creeped into their hearts. Perhaps they had accepted that the nation of Israel would never be free again. They feared they would all die as slaves in a foreign land. In this message, God sought to reassure the nation of Israel that this was not the case. They had a future as a nation, and in that future, Freedom was assured. But why should Israel believe a bright future was coming? They could believe it because the message of hope and comfort came from a God they knew. This was the same God who took an old man and a barren elderly wife and made from their impotent bodies a whole nation. The Jews celebrated Abraham as the father of the nation. Therefore, linking the message of hope to Abraham gave credibility. The message was from a God who had a great record of keeping promises. Apostle Paul used the same line of reasoning to the Galatians. 
And that can be found in Galatians 3, 15 through 18. Watch as the text moves us among scene as a well-directed movie. We start in scenes at waste places, wildernesses, and deserts. Then we transition to places of comfort, the Garden of Eden, and situations of joy and gladness. God offers situations that promote joy and gladness. Thanksgiving and singing from scenes of unfairness and injustice. Darkness will give way to light. Bondage, both physical and spiritual, will make room for salvation. This salvation will last beyond the crumbling of the heavens above and the earth beneath. This idea a renewal for Israel after its captivity and oppression is re repeated throughout the Hebrew scriptures. And you can find it in Jeremiah 41, verses 2, 6, and 22. Ezekiel 38, 8, and 12. And Daniel 9 and 2. The despair and oppression of the nation would be for a limited period, the liberation would stretch into eternity. And what about the Babylonians who were oppressing the people? Israel, that is. Take heart. Yes, they look big and mighty, even invincible at the stage. But hold on. At the appointed time, these oppressors will be wiped out without a trace. A proper reading of the last part of the verse, of verse four extends to the prophecy from Israel to the whole world that is light to the peoples. This idea of God's lighting, light shining on the whole world is echoed throughout Isaiah chapter 42 and 6, chapter 49 and 6, chapter 51 and 4, and chapter 60 and 3. Revelation 21 and chapter 21, verse 24, shows the fulfillment of this vision. Amen. Our Sankofa for today, God offers deliverance. When we accept that the message from God, it is to make it easy for us to embrace today. But consider how the message must have sounded to the Israel who heard it as it came through Isaiah, how would the message have sounded? How would have endeared it to the hearts of the first hearers? A modern version of this message was delivered by the vice president of Nigeria, Yemi Asimbagjo, in an address to the Nigerian Baptist Convention. Here are parts of the speech as reported in the online version of the Chronicle, April 25th, 2021. Quote, there is a promise of God for this nation that this nation will prosper, that this nation will be the epicenter of an astonishing economic and scientific development of the 21st century that we will create here in Nigeria an oasis of peace, security and prosperity such as has never been seen before on this continent and beyond. 
And he continued, this is the promise of God. But today the clouds are overcast. The promise seems impossible as it was with the children of Israel after leaving Egypt on the way to the promised land. The journey of the promise of God for Nigeria, the journey to the promised land of God for Nigeria is going through storms and adversity, but the end will be better than the beginning. Weeping may endure for the night, for joy comes in the morning. I urge you men and women of God not to allow adversities of the moment to shape your utterance and your perception. We must not sound like the children of Israel, fearful before Goliath, petrified and complaining at the Red Sea as Pharaoh and his hostile hosts approached. We are the light of the world. We are the voice of God in a confused and discouraged world. We must speak the things that God has promised as though they are because they will come to pass. The clouds cannot deny the existence of the sun that they may cover it for a while, but they must give way to a glorious brightness of sunshine. The vice president assured, amen. Our case study, God offers deliverance. Usually when we speak as, um, of God as the creator, we limit our focus to the creation narratives. For some commentators, at the end of the seventh day of creation, God put the keys to the affairs of the world in the hands of humankind. God created the world and left. Such a view is limited and not supported by history or the scriptures. Then we have a very liberal view of divine creation. This starts with the cause of the classic Bible creation story also. But rather than stop in Genesis, this outlook stretches God's creative hand into our time, into our present lives. This viewpoint sees God created work not as a one-off event. Creation in this view is a continuous <clears throat> involvement to steer the world to plan outcomes. And even to those times when all reasonable hope seems lost and events are spinning out of control, God is still creating. Such a view was given by Bishop Henry McNeil Turner, who is the 12th Bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And this was done while he was pastoring at Israel AME Church in Washington, DC. And please note the time, this was sometime in 1862. <clears throat> Here are potions, <clears throat> excuse me, that of that 19, 1862 sermon as reported by journalist Sidney Andrews for the Atlantic Magazine. And I quote, in the beginning, God created, the Bible says. God has beginning every day. He goes on creating every day. What shall I tell you? Shall I tell you what? He is making us poor man over every day of all this wartime. We aren't worth much two years ago. Perhaps we aren't worth a great deal now, but God will make men and women of us 
before he rests from his work. He is every day creating righteousness of hearts among white people of this land. And when he finishes that creation, the chains will fall from our race and we shall walk free everywhere and know no master but Christ. And he is every day creating friends for us, not only here in Washington, but all over the North. Whoever else goes back on him, we can't do so. So how do you access Bishop Turner understanding of the creation? Do you agree that God continues to create? Be mindful that our theme this quarter is partners in a new creation. Our life ap application. God offers deliverance. Isaiah's, Isaiah's appeal for Israel have to have confidence in God's promise of liber liberation was based on God's uh, faithfulness. God had proven himself to a nation in the past, even before they were a nation. We were familiar with this approach in our everyday life. Do you have a firm footing to stand on concerning God's promises in the Bible? Isaiah calls you as you <clears throat> to believe something they could not see outside the walls of faith in God. This is the same call that comes from the passage like John 14 and 3. Do you have a firm basis for accepting these calls? Meditate on them. As noted earlier, some studies suggest that God are drifting that the people are drifting away from the belief in God of the Bible. Many persons are outright hostile to the idea of God who wants to tell them how to live. <clears throat> Indeed, they protest that the stories in the Bible are nothing more than ancient fables and fairy tales like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Are you equipped to defend your Christian faith and the stories of the Bible? Are you equipped to be an evangelist? Please consider how you would respond to a beloved relative or friend who tells you that the events in the book of Isaiah never happened. As crazy as it may sound, even some ministers have a hard time believing certain parts of the Bible. Can you give a reasonable defense of what you accept as God's word? If you can't, make this a point of discussion of your Bible study. The text in this lesson calls Israel to Look forward and beyond the misery and towards glory. Maybe you should spend more time doing just that. Examine your vision for your future. Do you look towards the future with hope and excitement? Or do you dread where COVID-19 takes the world? What message of hope do you hear from God? when millions have died in the COVID-19 pandemic and thousands continue to die every day. Can you still find hope for a bright future? So as we went through today's lesson, 
here are some practical, practical points to remember. Those of you who know the Lord would do well to look back to see how he has worked providentially in your lives. It is helpful, it is a helpful antidote to discouragement to remember those who have trusted God and seen, and seen his promises fulfilled. So God promises maybe a long time in being fulfilled, but it does not make their reality any less certain. The only sure justice in the world is that which God himself will one day establish. God's righteousness ex is expressed in both his salvation of the righteous and his judgment of the wicked. And unlike man and all of creation, God does not change and then finally, practical point, opposition and persecution will be short-lived. We should not allow them to hinder our commitment to our eternal savior. Amen. Our closing devotion. When peace like a river when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Blessed Savior, you are my comfort in times of distress, help me, O oh great God, to hear your voice and embrace your message of hope in my life, even in the valley of death. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week.